let's start with your comment that India is facing the gravest threat to uh, our democracy since its founding. Now, let me let me push back a little bit here. I mean, there's a famous line of you know by Mark Twain that you know reports of my death are vastly exaggerated, and many Indians would turn around, look at what all of you have said, and said, "Oh, this is an echo chamber of liberals. What you know, this is predictable. This is as we expected them to say." And who really even cares about these liberals because they don't decide how Indians think, feel, or vote. Most importantly, so I want you to start by responding to the cynicism. There will be many who will agree with you, but will you be really changing minds with what you've argued in this anthology? Thanks, Barkha. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, we compiled the anthology, and we wrote the pieces that we did. As I write in my introduction, as an act of love for India, I want this to be very clear. Uh, we are Indian authors. I uh, was born in India and I lived there for the first 14 years of my life. And then I came back to live again in India to write Maximum City. I come back every year, sometimes several times a year. Half of the authors in this anthology live in India today. We did this, and I do believe that India is facing the gravest uh, threat in its, uh, uh, in its independent history. And the threat is this, that you know, when India came into being, it was this wonderful dream of a country which respected religion, but did not have an official state religion, did not privilege one religion over another. This is now changing. There are actually serious proposals to have a dharmic constitution or a Hindu constitution to replace the great constitution whose principal author was Ambedkar um, with uh, a constitution that makes Hinduism the official state religion. Um, even if it doesn't go that far, the threats that uh, writers, journalists, you know, people who disagree uh, with uh, the prevailing um, government ideology, um, the the attitudes of some of the judiciary towards these dissenters, you know, and here we can um, cite the examples of uh, my friends uh, Tista Settlewad, um, of um, uh, the great fact checker Zubair. Um, you know, we know the names. Most Indians know the names because they're being discussed on on the television shows. So the danger ahead is that. Um, we alienate 200 million Indian Muslims, 30 million Christians, uh, Sikhs, um, Zoroastrians, uh, agnostics, um, uh, atheists, people who don't fit into this majoritarian ideology. And I would hate to see us turn into not just Pakistan or Iran or Afghanistan, but even Turkey. You know, we're better than this. And and we will need to be united because, I mean, we keep talking about these religious divides, but the great danger to our country isn't terrorism. It's climate change. You live in Delhi. You know that this year, temperatures in Delhi were 49 degrees Celsius. In, you know, in just a couple of decades, you will be cooked if you step outside your house. Um, we cannot afford to split along religious lines because we have enormous challenges ahead. And this is the danger. This is what compelled us to write this anthology. This is what compels me personally to keep writing the way I do. It could be argued, and uh, you will obviously understand that my role in this conversation is also to, to, to push back on some of your arguments to enable a more complex conversation. Uh, and it could be argued that the disquiet that you express about India, the rise of populism, the marginalization, especially political, of India's Muslims, uh, diminishing freedoms in, in terms of the space for expression, these are battles not unique to India. These are battles that the world is battling. And let's go from the land of your birth, the country you love, to the country of your citizenship today, the United States of America, where women have lost uh, the right to abortion, where guns appear to have more rights than women, uh, where, uh, you know, the attack on Rushdie has not taken place in a Muslim country, but in the land of the, of the free, where, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter uh, is still a 
you know, extremely uh, debated uh, and not a uniformly sort of accepted campaign and where there is still a sizable number of pop of people who will root for Trump, irrespective of what we now know about the attempts to seize Capitol Hill. So I guess my question is, is this disquiet that you express in this anthology unique to India, or is it that you care more about India because this is the country of your birth? Look, I completely agree with you. And in fact, I have written a book length document of dissent, uh, um, uh, which relates to the country of my citizenship, the United States. So my book, This Land is Our Land, came out last year. It is available in India. There are excerpts of it uh, uh, all over the web. There are interviews that I've done. And, you know, it, both the countries that are dearest to me, the United States and India, are both under the gravest threats to their democracy since their founding. I absolutely agree with you. India is not unique. The same thing is happening in the United States. There are some 70 million people who voted for Trump. And I'd say about 50 million of those believe that the election was stolen. So for the first time in American democracy, there is a crisis of legitimacy when it comes to elections. Right. And what is the role of a writer? Look, I'm a writer. I'm not a politician. I'm not an economist. I'm not a demographer. What I can do is write. We are canaries in a coal mine. And so all over... Uh, throughout history, writers have said things that are unpopular. I'm not a PR uh, flack. My job is to see things as I call it. Um, and if I am attacked for it, well, you know, that comes with the territory. I mean, my dear close friend, Salman, all his life since he wrote The Satanic Verses has been attacked. And he almost came close to paying with his life for believing in writing what he does. And you know what? We are seeing over and over again the, the words that he's written, not just about Islam, but about Hinduism. He has a piece in our anthology about India. He's motivated by the same love for India. He will call it as he sees it in whatever country. And, and, and so do we as writers. This is what we do. This is our dharma.